tonight's sacred liturgy, we extend a warm welcome to those visiting. We're so glad you've chosen to join us, and we hope you feel very welcome. We begin tonight's liturgy with song. I invite you to open your Breaking Bread books to number 313, Gather Your People, number 313. Let us sing together verses 1, 2, and 4. Please stand if you are able. shepherding, how God, the eternal shepherd, always watches over his flock, the people Israel, Israel. And so it is for us today as God watches over us. And so as we now prepare ourselves for this liturgy today, we take a moment to pause and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contract. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. We join now in the scene of our glory. Oh, no. 
to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace. They may be fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And let us be seated to hear God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I shall 
dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who, you who once were far off have become near, near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with his commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one holy through the cross, putting the enmity to death by it. <clears throat> he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were nearer, for through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. In the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest for a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place, and people saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before the boat. <coughs> when, he disembarked, when he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> in a nation born of freedom, in a world today exhilarated by newfound freedom, the presence of fear and insecurity are becoming ever more dominant realities. We see it in school violence and other acts of violence across our country. We see it at the workplace 
and even in our homes. The level of violence and distrust is steadily increasing in our country. Our personal freedom has not stemmed this violence. In fact, it appears to only be intensifying our natural fear of those who are different. Animosities are growing among people of different social classes. The homeless, the poor, the working class, the professionals, and even in the very rich and in all the immigrants arriving in our nation. The perennial questions of sharing wealth, of competition, of entitlements continue to plague our society. So much social division has brought new levels of violence in our human experience. Irritation becomes rage. Disrespect escalates into lack of self-control. Indeed, when we read our newspapers or listen to the nightly news, it becomes evident that the human race is going astray. And we are indeed becoming a flock without a shepherd. In our readings this weekend, we hear that our present experience is not really a new one for humanity. In the first reading, the prophet Jeremiah is describing the sad state of Yahweh's people in his day as a flock that is scattered and wandering, that they are without a shepherd. Jeremiah is writing during the time of exile for Israel the time that we refer to as the Babylonian captivity. The people are suffering from poor leadership of incompetent and corrupt kings. Jeremiah is reassuring the people that God has not abandoned them, that a better life is coming, that God will return them to their homeland, and God will restore their identity as his chosen people. From the terror of the exile, Israel will dwell again in Yahweh's kingdom of peace and justice. In the second reading, Paul is speaking of the animosity that exists between the Christian Jews and the Christian Gentiles. There was a strong separation being enforced in the temple precincts where non-Jews were not allowed to enter. Paul extols the role of Jesus in breaking down the barrier and attempting to reconcile Jew and Gentile. Paul maintains that Jesus is the peace between people, that he is the way to harmony and unity, that Jesus can destroy this hostility between Jew and Gentile and reconcile all people with God. And finally, in the gospel, Mark portrays the concern of the good shepherd for Yahweh's people. We hear how Jesus is concerned for his disciples who have labored with him in his mission. He encourages them to go away from the crowds and to have some time for rest. And yet the crowds continue to follow them and they will not be turned away. And so Jesus accepts that he must put aside his own personal comfort to provide for the care of this great crowd. It is true that violence and insecurity continue to mar our human experience. Today's readings are attempting to reassure us that throughout it all, God remains patient with humanity. God's love permeates every corner of our universe and offers us the promise of hope in the face of all of this violence. And at the same time, it is to be hoped that Christian lives are the most evident counteraction to today's violence. We Christians claim to be one body, to be one people of God. Does this stated hope really exist as a fact? in our world today. What positive steps are being taken to end this violence and to break down the barriers of prejudice 
that surround us? What are the walls that continue to divide? The one people of God. Believe it or not, there is some hope in the world today. There are some people who are seeking to be good shepherds. We hear of an occasional story of a corporation or a charitable endowment who adopts an inner city school and sees to it that it is well equipped, well equipped and provided with quality teachers. We sometimes hear stories of retired persons who organize programs to help new immigrants to learn English. And we sometimes hear stories of high school or college students who sacrifice some of their summer vacation to work for Habitat for Humanity, to build and restore houses for low-income families. The concern of a few people can make a difference in bringing people together and tackling the problems of violence, which we all face today. With God's love as our strength, what can possibly separate us? And sadly, the answer is our own perverse refusal to love, to choose to be selfish. When we allow the power of love to reign in our lives, then we will be able to truly live in freedom. Then there will no longer be any fear. And then we shall dwell in the security of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Now stand and offer our prayers and needs this evening. God our Father, you appointed your Son as the shepherd of your people. We pray to your Son for the graces to follow him to the best of our abilities. We are often like sheep without a shepherd. Shepherd us, O Lord, and help us to follow in your footsteps. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for vacations in the priesthood so that we will always have loving and compassionate shepherds to lead us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who govern us, that they may have the heart and mind of a good shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who feed lost or almost in the world, for prisoners and those who suffer their offenses. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for good weather and abundant crops. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our church community and for Father John who shepherds us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died especially Jan Davitt and Chris Bloom, the special intentions of this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the petitions in our prayer basket, for the sick listed in our bulletin, for our family members serving in the military, and for our own personal petitions that we now express in silence. And we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together we pray the prayer for vocations found in the back of our miscellaneous. Lord of the harvest, your word finds a home in our hearts, calls us into community, and invites us to generous service of the human family. 
Blessed with courage and spirit, your priestly people, call the full participation in the one body of Christ. May many choose to respond in public service to your call, offered in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us be seated for the preparation of gifts. I invite you to open your breaking bread books to number 471. Let us sing together, All is Well with My Soul. Number 471. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. 
for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion the very offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising and ascended setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, which we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, Saint Michael and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, the order bishops, the clergy, and all the people you have called to be your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to another the sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. communion song is number 461 in your breaking bread books come to me number 461 <laughs>
Announcements. I ask the uh, ushers if they'll come forward now as we'll take up the second collection for the Shelby County Community Outreach Program, their backpack ministry program for the uh, schools. We've had a good response in years past towards this, and so we appreciate your support to this uh, collection this year. And speaking of thank yous, we uh, have a couple of thank yous to mention. First of all, our annual Dossison Appeal. We have finally gone over our goal of $54,519. I want to thank the 215 parish, or families, I should say, of the parish who responded generously to this year's appeal. Again, uh, your gifts have helped to assure the Diocese of Des Moines will be able to continue in its mission of building the body of Christ here in Southwest Iowa. And I also want to thank you for your response last week to our second collection for our sister parish in Nicaragua. Our collection was $1,653.95. Uh, the five other parishes of Shelby County will be taking up the collection this weekend at their masses. And because of your generosity, Padre Alexis will be able to purchase a lot of rice and beans for the elderly meals down there. So thank you for your support last weekend. And we just want to bring to your attention that the Shelby County Catholic School Golf Tournament is uh, fast approaching. It will take place on Friday, August 10th at uh, 5.30 with a shotgun start at the Roseman Glendale Golf Course. Entries are limited to the first 18 teams with $50 per player, which will include nine holes of golf, a steak supper, and prizes. Uh, register your foursome by calling the school at 755-5634. And there are more details in the bulletin about the golf tournament. Let's stand and pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our sending hymn is number 630, Lead Me, Lord, number 630. Let us sing together verses 1, 2, and 3.
blessed are they. 